on the morning of February 14, 2016 in the city of Fuzhou, located in China's southeastern province of Fujian. Police had come to the teacher's dormitory building of Fuzhou Second, affiliated middle school, looking for a missing former employee, Xie Tianqin. After receiving no answer to their knocking, police pried their way into the room. They had been contacted by a concerned relative of a former teacher at the school. History teacher Xie Tianqin was supposed to have returned to China from America for the upcoming spring festival with her son. But when the relative went to the train station to pick them up, they weren't among the passengers. Once inside the room, police were greeted with the shocking and strange sight of a body wrapped in several layers of plastic, as if someone had tried to mummify it. The body of Xie Tianqin had been wrapped in 75 layers of plastic film. Each of the layers had activated carbon placed between them. There were a large number of air fresheners around the body, which had been hidden under bed sheets. The police also found that someone had set up a number of surveillance cameras connected to an alarm system. They were set up to turn on when someone entered the room. The images from the camera would be shown on the phone or computer of whoever installed them. This meant the police were potentially being watched as soon as they entered the dorm room. An autopsy later showed that Xie Tianqin died from blunt force trauma to the head. She had been killed some time ago. Police started attempting to piece together what exactly happened to bring them to this unusual crime scene. As far as anyone knew, Xie Tianqin had resigned from her teaching position last July. She wrote in her letter of resignation that she intended to accompany her son as he studied overseas. Her family and employer had both been told the same story, but as she was lying dead in her school dormitory that obviously wasn't the case. The family had received a message supposedly from Xie Tianqin that they were returning to China to celebrate the Chinese New Year with them. The message had clearly not been sent by Xie Tianqin, and when they looked through immigration records the police found that neither her nor her son had left the country. With his mother having been brutally murdered, police began looking for the son. However, as they investigated any concerns quickly turned to suspicion, and soon they would be offering a reward for information leading to his arrest. As more information came out about the son Wu Xieyu, the more it shocked people that he was the number one suspect for the brutal death of his mother. Wu Xieyu to many was the image of the perfect Chinese son. And he absolutely didn't fit the profile of that of a vicious killer. He was considered one of the top students in the Department of Economics at Beijing University, one of the most prestigious universities in the country. To his friends, teachers and family he was a friendly, dedicated, hard-working young man who had a bright future ahead of him. Now he was being hunted down for the death of his mother, whom he had always seemed to love dearly. It would take three years for the police to catch up with Wu Xieyu to face trial for his shocking criminal act. Wu Xieyu was born on October 7, 1994 in the city of Nanping in Fujian province. While his mother was a teacher, his father worked for a state-owned enterprise. The family moved to Fuzhou in 1996 due to his mother being offered a job at Fuzhou Second Affiliated Middle School and taking a position as a history teacher. Wu Xieyu was a standout student, not only being the top student in his class but the entire grade. Unlike other students who could excel in one subject but struggle in others, Wu Xieyu didn't seem to have any weak subjects. Even in his free time he would work to improve his knowledge rather than playing games he read or would study more. One former teacher who remembered him very well was quoted as saying, his only flaw was that he didn't seem to have any. This dedication and drive to succeed is a trait he picked up from his parents. Both his mother and father grew up in very difficult circumstances, both being born into families which had to face various hardships. The troubles they experienced extended beyond the levels of poverty at that time. Xie Tianqin came from a scholarly family. Her father was one of a number of brothers and sisters who all attended university. Her father however lost his eyesight and was forced to leave college. He later married a woman who was also blind. Xie Tianqin was their first child and was later joined by two sisters and a brother. Her parents relied on money from the uncles and aunts on her father's side. But with two blind parents in rural China the children had to mature fast to help them. Xie Tianqin, as the eldest felt the burden of responsibility, and so put a lot of effort into her education. It paid off and she was admitted to university. In 1990 she met a man who had been through similar hardships in his youth, and the pair married two years later. The father of Wu Xieyu, Wu Zhijian was one of five siblings, however he was the only son. 
a native of Fuzhou, the family had to face many issues as Wu Zhijian grew up. His father died when he was only eight years old, leaving his mother struggling to bring up five children. Things got so bad she would have to put one of the sisters up for foster care. Another of the sisters suffered from schizophrenia and was committed to a mental health facility. Wu Zhijian knew he needed to work hard to try and help lift his family out of the poverty they were suffering. He applied himself to his education and would gain entry to university where he studied electrical engineering. The effort they put into their studies would earn both Xie Tianqin and Wu Zhijian what are often referred to in China as Tiefanwan jobs or iron rice bowl jobs, meaning they were stable, secure work that paid decent salaries. Xie Tianqin at a public, government-funded school and Wu Zhijian at a state-owned enterprise. The money they earned from these jobs would be enough to financially support their families. Wu Xieyu was following in his parents' footsteps in regards to his attitude to education. However, in 2010, tragedy struck a family. His father's family had a history of health issues. These would strike Wu Zhijian when he was diagnosed with advanced cancer of the liver. His father died from the disease. The family had not told Wu Xieyu how serious his father's illness was, partly out of being unsure how to talk about the subject, partly to not allow it to distract him from his studies. He found out about his father's passing while in school. He never got the chance to see or speak to his father in his final moments. Naturally, the event had an effect on the young Wu Xieyu and his mother. Xie Tianqin now had the burden of having to support two families, her own and her late husband's. While never an especially extroverted person, she became more closed off and showed signs of depression. Wu Xieyu would also talk about feeling depressed, but he also became something of a hypochondriac. He did suffer some health problems as a child, eczema and asthma, but now he felt his health was much worse than it actually was. He believed he would suffer an early death due to illness, and convinced himself he was suffering from heart problems. He also began to feel some of his relatives were to blame for his father's death, believing they neglected his medical treatment. Seeing the impact the death of his father had on his mother, he knew he had to take care of her. He didn't open up about his feelings to her, only occasionally talking about them with friends. And he didn't allow his father's death to affect his education, hoping his performance in school would give his mother some happiness and pride. In 2012, his efforts were rewarded when he was accepted into Beijing University. This for many Chinese parents is a dream, and for the first time since her husband died, Xie Tianqin seemed to be happy. However, Wu Xieyu was concerned about the effect his leaving Fuzhou for Beijing would have on his mother. He would be almost 2,000 kilometers away, and she would be left alone. At Beijing University, his outstanding academic achievement continued. In his freshman year, Wu Xieyu was picked out as one of the top three students. In his sophomore year, he was awarded a scholarship for his performance. He didn't forget his mother. He would make sure to call her every day, talking with her for 20 or 30 minutes at a time. And while his university classmates viewed him as a warm, friendly person he didn't show true feelings he was having. In 2013 he sought out an old high school classmate and talked about thoughts of ending his own life. His hypochondria was still an issue, he was convinced he was seriously ill, but his father's death had left him with a deep mistrust of doctors and hospitals. However, despite the personal issues he was having and hiding from the people around him, they still didn't impact his studies. In 2014, he began preparing to take the GRE and TOEFL tests in the hope of studying abroad, potentially for a PhD. As was typical for him, he aced the GRE test and so began making plans to study overseas. He wanted to attend MIT in Boston. However, he would never set foot on the campus. Despite his success, dark thoughts started coming to the star student. At some point in 2015, it appears Wu Xieyu had decided that his mother had to die. Towards the end of June, as the school year was coming to an end, Wu Xieyu made a number of online purchases. Knives and plastic sheeting most notable among them. In July he returned to his mother's home in the teacher's dormitory of Fuzhou Second Affiliated Middle School from Beijing. She was delighted to have him home and they would spend a few days together, before the day Wu Xieyu had chosen to end his mother's life. On the 10th of July as she was bending over to change her shoes, her son, Wu Xieyu, beat her over the head with a bar from a set of dumbbells. He brutally bludgeoned her to death. The day he chose held some significance. His mother gave him life on the 7th of October. He ended his mother's life on a reversal of that date, the 10th of July. 
Using the knives he had purchased online, he tried to begin the process of dismembering the body. However, he would change his mind soon after attempting it. Over the next several days, he bought the items, such as the plastic film, activated charcoal, and deodorizers, which he used to effectively mummify his mother. He also sent family and other people close to the family a series of messages asking to borrow money from his mother's phone. Acting as her, he announced that she was going to accompany Wu Xieyu as he studied overseas and they needed the money for living expenses, accommodation and proof of funding for immigration purposes. He managed to obtain close to one and a half million RMB which would be around $200,000 today. He used some of this money to buy 21 fake ID cards online. In August, using his mother's diary to copy her handwriting, he then forged a letter of resignation which he sent to the school management. No one from the school questioned the resignation, or asked to speak to her face to face to discuss it. They just accepted it and looked for a replacement teacher. It was during this time that Wu Xiyu set up the surveillance system in the room. He shut all curtains and tried to cover all light sources. He locked his mother in the bedroom and left the campus. The next record of his movements were in October of 2015. He registered in a hotel in Fuzhou using his real ID card. It has been claimed that sometime between leaving his crime scene and appearing again in Fuzhou, he spent some time in Shanghai. A woman who was working in an entertainment venue at the time later claimed to have met and had an intimate moment with him. The next confirmed sighting would take place back at Beijing University. Classmates of Wu Xieyu remembered him coming back to the school and asking how he could sit an examination he missed. It seemed to the students he spoke with, Wu Xieyu was just looking to catch up on work he missed while he was away. Once leaving the campus, his movements wouldn't be known until the following year. In February 2016, he withdrew money from an ATM in Henan province. He was using his mother's bank card at the time, which was where he had placed the money his family had lent him. Police later released an image of him taken by the security camera on the ATM. It would be shortly after this an uncle of Wu Xieyu received the text message that the pair would be returning to China on February 6th. Only days later the body of Xie Tianqin was discovered by police, still where Wu Xie had left it. Xie Tianqin had been locked away in the bedroom for seven months. Her body very slowly decomposing. As well as the school, for which she had been a teacher for many years, not requesting to speak to her face to face about her resignation. It is hard to understand how no one noticed anything wrong. No one from the school checked to see if her room there had been vacated. And despite Wu Xie acting as her in text and instant messages, people didn't think it strange that they could never speak to her on the phone or in video calls. No friends or family members thought there was anything wrong. No one had noticed she was gone. It didn't take long for Wu Xie to become the number one suspect in the crime. But Wu Xie had a head start, money and a large number of fake ID cards. After sending the text to his uncle Wu Xie, vanished and wouldn't be found for three years. In the time between he sent the text message and his eventual arrest, Wu Xieyu traveled to various cities in China. He would settle on hiding in the mega city of Chongqing. He spent much of his time drinking in nightclubs and frequenting places where women offered special services. He spent large amounts of money on lottery scratch cards and started a relationship with a woman who worked in an entertainment venue offering the special services. As the money he had defrauded from relatives began to run out, he needed to find work. During the day he worked as a teacher in a private training center and at night he worked as a drinking companion in a nightclub. Similar to the hostess bars in Japan, it is fairly common practice for nightclubs to hire people to accompany customers as they drink. While this is usually women who are hired to drink with men, some venues also hire men to sit with female customers. The aim is largely to get people to drink more through drinking games and to give the customers a good night so they will come back. He started paying more attention to his appearance working out regularly and keeping himself well-groomed. He went under different names at the different places that employed him and told people he was from Hunan province. Although few people believed that since he didn't have a Hunan accent. During his time as a fugitive he would come to the attention of police once but not as Wu Xieyu. He drugged his ex-girlfriend after they broke up and tried to destroy his laptop by burning it. He would later say he wanted to destroy the laptop because he had a large number of adult movies on it which he had downloaded during his time in college. He didn't want to be embarrassed by the laptop's contents if it was found. However, nothing came of the incident and his true identity remained hidden. 
It wouldn't be until April 21, 2019 that police finally caught up with him. He went with a friend to Jiangbei Airport in Chongqing. He was only there to see the friend off on a flight. Despite only being in the airport for 10 minutes, facial recognition technology flagged him and police made the arrest. He was questioned for 8 hours by investigators, and while he confessed to being responsible for his mother's death, he was less forthcoming about the reason. When pressed on the motive for his actions, he would change the subject and begin talking about other topics, often of an academic or philosophical nature. He would however explain some of his actions in the aftermath of the crime. He told police that when he booked into the hotel in Fuzhou, he intended to go back to the dormitory and deal with his mother's body, however he couldn't bring himself to face her. He also felt that he would be able to go back to his old life and continue his studies at Beijing University, but quickly realized how ridiculous the idea of that was. He was charged with intentional homicide for his mother's death, fraud for the money he borrowed from family, and the buying and selling of counterfeit ID cards. The news of his arrest rekindled a huge amount of interest in the case. Wu Xieyu was considered the model of a perfect son. A hard-working dedicated student who attended and excelled in one of China's top universities, some even referred to him as a genius. People wanted to know why he would do what he did, and in such a brutal but obviously premeditated and well-planned manner. Even former friends and classmates from university and high school were shocked that he did it. They would say in interviews that Wu Xi never spoke about any issues between him and his mother. In fact, when he did talk about her, it was with pride and love. University classmates remembered how proud he seemed when he told them his mother was a teacher of history. Posts Wu Xi put online were found where he expressed his love for Xie Tianxi. He was the antithesis of a vicious methodical killer, at least that's how it appeared. Without any explanation from Wu Xi, the media started looking for reasons themselves. There were a number of sensationalized and mostly inaccurate articles written about the private life of Wu Xie to try and explain why the good kid turned bad. On December 24, 2020, Wu Xie faced trial. When talking about his father, he would get upset and break down in tears. But when asked about his mother, he praised her but didn't have the same emotional reaction. He would finally give some clue as to why he ended his mother's life, claiming that it was to help her. He had grown up seeing the impact his father's death had and continued to have on her. He said he felt it would end the pain she was still enduring from that time. He would also expand on the effect his father's death had on him, believing it caused him great psychological issues and the bitterness he felt towards his other family members for their perceived lack of care towards his father. Wu Xieyu didn't dispute any of the charges against him, accepting his guilt. He was sentenced to death for the intentional homicide of his mother, 11 years imprisonment for the charge of fraud, and another 3 years for the buying and selling of fake identity documents. Wu Xieyu would later appeal the sentence. While not disputing his guilt, he felt that the punishment of death was too harsh. However, his second trial would see a lengthy delay due to the pandemic and the lockdowns that began soon after his first trial. Before the second trial, he would agree to undergo a psychological evaluation, something he had refused prior to his first trial. While being held in detention, he would write a 50,000-word letter of repentance, asking for the forgiveness of his family. Once again, he went into detail about the impact the death of his father had on him, and wrote about how he felt movies he watched and books he read had influenced him negatively. The movie The Mist was one he mentioned as having a particularly powerful effect. Wu Xieyu hoped that he would be given the opportunity to redeem himself in some manner, believing that he had more to offer the world. While some family members publicly stated that they had forgiven him, others did not. It wouldn't be until May 19, 2023 that the second trial would be heard. The original judgment was upheld and Wu Xieyu was sentenced to death. As of the making of this video the sentence has not been carried out. He did give further insight into his motives during the second trial. He had come to believe that his mother was going to end her own life. Thoughts he himself had been having. Shortly after returning to college after a holiday, he decided that he wanted to end her suffering. Once he had ended her pain, he would then take his own life, and in that way they would be able to go home together. His mother reunited with her husband and he would be reunited with his father. However, he was unable to go through with his plan fully. Perhaps due to Wu Xieyu being an unlikely killer, the reaction to him being given the death penalty has been mixed. While many believe it it fully deserved, Others feel it is too harsh and he should be shown leniency. 
The case is another that has brought attention on the pressures of the Chinese education system that young people have to face. The calls for leniency generally come from the younger generation who have experienced the stress placed on them to get into the best universities. In the years since she was brutally beaten to death by her own perfect son, the dormitory where the crime took place has remained vacant. A perfect illustration of how people, apart from the person who killed her cared for Xie Tianqin so little, happened shortly after her death. Wu Xieyu held a banquet with her colleagues from the school to celebrate her going to America with him. Not one person thought to pay much mind as to why the person who was hosting the banquet didn't turn up. Instead, she would lie dead in her home for seven months. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and leaving a comment. And hope to see you again for the next dark tale from the Middle Kingdom.